It is crazy how much can come out of being a guest on another podcast just because they're shining the spotlight on you as an expert and you have that floor for anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes and beyond. That's what this is about, how we can be better with our time, how we can leverage podcasting and specifically podcast guesting because then we don't have to do the nitty gritty with the editing, the promoting, the titles, all the things that go into making a podcast let alone the recording. Let me know if you've tried to get on podcasts before, or maybe you haven't tried, but you've definitely thought about it and considered it. What held you back? I'd like to know. I will tell you a lot more about why I think this is the thing to do, especially if you're a busy mom in business or you're a busy mom with a side hustle, trying your best to launch something. And I totally understand if you already have an audience and you're like, okay, it's my turn. It's my time. I'm ready. I want my own podcast and I do not want to discourage you. However, it is a lot of work. And if you have staff, a virtual assistant, you have money set aside to help you and you're excited and you're ready to roll up your sleeves and jump in, then great. I do not want to discourage you. I do want to say that this is specifically focused on the guesting aspect. So even if you're maybe thinking about starting your own podcast, keep on listening because becoming a guest will help you build your audience whether you have a podcast or not. And if you do have a podcast, it's going to make it that much easier to get it off the ground. So I'm going to focus on why podcasting is so powerful, podcast guesting specifically. There are so many benefits to being a guest versus maybe some other things that you might be doing. I get into the details of that, the demographics and the wealth associated with podcast audiences, their loyalty, why podcasting and guesting are so powerful right now. I'm recording this in March of 2024. It's a $23 billion industry. As of 2023, growth is projected to increase to over $100 billion before 2030. It's going to be monumental growth. There are 464 million podcast listeners worldwide, which is projected to reach 504.9 million by the end of this year, 2024. The average listener spends a whopping seven hours per week glued to their favorite podcast app. The episodes on average are between 20 and 40 minutes. 59% of people listen to podcasts while they're doing something else at the same time. So they're walking their dog, doing dishes, working out, driving. And what's cool about podcasting is that you can actually do that. Unlike video where you need to pay attention, you do not need the visual piece, which is amazing because you can free yourself to do all the other things in life. And when you're in someone's earbuds, you're literally in their head. It's a one person show. If you're in the car or there are other people around and you're playing it through a speaker, it's a totally different experience. But I think the power of podcasting is just how powerful it is. You could be driving with somebody else in the car. Everybody could be listening to a different podcast. And it's, it can be that personal, I get to choose what I want. And there's something to be said for that. There's something for everyone's taste, which I love. Again, that's the beauty of the niche podcast. Apple had the highest or greatest number of listeners, but the platform that's above that right now is Spotify. So it's 33.7% is Spotify, 27.6% are on Apple, 6.2% are listening through iHeartRadio, and then below that is Google Podcasts at 3.6%. And then the rest are Chrome, Amazon Music, Alexa, and CastBox. Spotify recorded almost 5 million podcast titles on its platform. And Apple has just half of that at 2.5 million. What's interesting about podcast listeners is that over 66% of them have a college degree or higher and an average annual household income of 75,000 or more. So this is a great market for you to get whatever it is you're selling or promoting in front of this audience. And they admit that they purchase based on what they here in the podcast. So it's not just the guest, but the ads. Being part of the conversation, the actual guest versus an ad is a really positive thing to have, right? So you're just having a natural conversation and then you just slip in doing the book that you wrote, the product that you have, and it's not the main focus and it's not in your face, but it's there and you've talked about it and you've been able to share your expertise and what your focus is and with a good 
interviewer. They've made it really interesting talking to you and interviewing you. And they ask you to share where people can learn more, an opt-in page, etc., to build your email list, your social media, and all the things. Podcast listenership transcends gender with women slightly edging out men, 48 percent versus 43. Those are amazing reasons why podcasting and specifically niche podcast guesting is such a great way to get yourself in front of the right people who are interested and can afford whatever you're hoping to sell them. And what's excellent about entering the podcast guesting sphere right now is that many podcasts have become video podcasts. It's a multiplier. It gives you even more that you can do with the episode that you're on. You can reuse the video for everything from YouTube, TikTok, Instagram Reels, Stories, Facebook Reels, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest as well. And that's the thing that I really like is that starting with one thing, the video podcast, you're able to repurpose across all kinds of vertical video platforms now. That didn't used to be the case. Before everything was a mixture of horizontal and vertical and different shapes and sizes. And now things have become much easier. And there are all kinds of apps that will take your horizontal show and chop it into vertical pieces, which again, just makes it so much easier to sprinkle the podcast around use different clips for different platforms. But you might be thinking right now, like, you're scared to death. How the heck do I do this? And I've already got enough on my plate. What if they say no, and I put all this effort in? They're going to say no. That's part of it. But you can move on to the next one and try again. The main thing is you, it's not going to happen if you don't just put yourself out there. And once you write one pitch, you can reuse it with very specific details filled in. It should be custom, but the template itself is very, very simple because podcasters do not have a lot of time to read a lot of fluff. It should be straight to the point, very specific about what you can offer them. You know, somebody who's in one of my podcast groups who had a course sold like $40,000 in one month and she barely had a list. And it was because she picked the right podcasts and she was able to get people on her list and get this thing that they wanted either directly to them or sell them later by her list. That's incredible. She had 300 people on her list and it was, you know, a moderately priced course that was $500. It was, it's pretty crazy. And there are tons of stories like that. That's just one. So the thing is, we're never going to know what could have happened until we put ourselves out there. And I have to do this too, because I've got stuff going on with my kids. And now I'm at a point where I have to push myself too. So we can do this together. And I have the How to Pitch a Podcast freebie, which is a step-by-step -step guide on how to go about finding the right podcast to pitch. And I will be putting some video links in that free PDF and it's a quick way for you to get started on your own. Just get the ball rolling. Go check out audaciousmamas.com slash how to pitch pods. I will also put this in the show notes. When you opt in, you will see the chat link for me for a 15 to 20 minute chat about podcasting or podcast guesting. It's really hard sometimes to identify which are the niche podcasts that you want to get in front of. The biggest podcasts often do not render the greatest results. Going after your niche where your audience already is, is where the power is because what we're looking for is a match between your specific content, your specific service, what you offer, and the listenership, who's out there listening to that podcast. And these tiny to medium-sized podcasts have very specific types of listeners in very specific niches and they're extremely loyal. And those big ones, when you go on those, yes, it helps your authority, but it doesn't fill your list and give you clients. If you can find that intersection, that's super powerful for your offer, building your list, getting in front of people who will become your future audience, your future clients. Listeners are very loyal. So they'll listen to a podcast and if they have to stop because they're doing the dishes, or they got to put the kids to bed or they stop their workout and now they're going to get in the car and go home, they will restart the podcast to complete it. 
and they listen from beginning to end. So that means if you can jump on a podcast and offer as a either free or low cost solution, you're set up to create yourself as an authority, to have people join your email list, to get into your funnel, which means you can connect with them again and maybe sell them another product later. So what am I talking about? Maybe you wrote a book. Maybe you created a small course that's showing people how to do something. Maybe you have an online workshop that's live and you interact and you teach people how to create a backyard garden and grow their own food, whatever it is. Maybe you spent years 10, 15, 20 plus years in corporate and you're ready to exit and become a consultant. And in that corporate job, yes, you were revered in your role, but they had a corporate social media gag order where you're not allowed to say what your opinion is and post things from your LinkedIn or Twitter as you in your business role. So now you've got this empty canvas and you can go out into the world and you can show up on other people's podcasts that are strategic have the audience who's looking for your solution and you can get on that podcast and be interviewed and that podcast host who's revered by their loyal audience you get on and there's this implied endorsement from the host and they're saying i trust this person they have authority they're going to teach you something that's going to make your life better in some way so they're lending you their authority and trust they've developed with their audience then when you have that information you share a story some tips tricks whatever to give people a quick win and you send them to the free download maybe it's a workshop the webinar could be your new book maybe you're telling them about an event that you're appearing at and you have a quick cheat sheet that's related to the event those things are going to build your list and people listening are going to want to go check out if they're the right audience and they need what you have. Imagine you're on a podcast, you schedule it, you get on, and then the podcast goes live. You promote it on social media. The podcast host is promoting it. They're probably promoting it more than once. So it's evergreen. Long, long people can Google your name and they're going to say, oh yeah, Sharon Smith, she's the one who can help me create a garden that actually renders stuff that my family can eat and saves me a ton of money and we get healthy. So you don't have to think of stuff to put out into the world. You can promote it once. You can promote it again. You can get a transcript of that podcast episode. You can take sound bites. You can make those into quote graphics. You can make an audiogram. If it's a video interview, you can take snippets of the video interview, repurpose those as reels, as shorts. You can share them on LinkedIn or wherever your audience is and tag the host so the host knows that you're promoting the podcast too. And you want to make sure you clear it with them. But most of of us podcast hosts, we're just so excited that somebody's sharing our podcast, growing our audience, that we're going to be really excited to have your help with that. And it's going to help you not have to be on that hamster wheel of content creation. You'd have your virtual assistant, somebody you hire on Fiverr, your kid, and say, this is my main thing that I do. Look through this transcript. Tell me where it says these keywords that you want to be known for. And then you're amplifying those points by posting them on social media. Maybe you're going to pull out some of it and actually extend it and make it as a blog on your own website. And this is how you start to grow your findability, your online authority and credibility. And this is how you really reach a targeted audience because most people are searching they want to know, how do I grow stuff that I can eat from my garden? How do I change this crappy mindset that I have? Those are just two examples, but you get it. So imagine maybe you pitch one a week, maybe you pitch two a month. As you get on these podcasts, they start to roll out and you start to accumulate all of these links from those podcasts back to your website and to your social media. That is how you strengthen your search engine optimization. That's what it is. Your SEO, your findability. I worked for a company as a ghostwriter, an SEO company. My job was helping their clients get backlinks from all these bigger organizations that have a strong following and authority in a, something called an Alexa ranking, it's a way to rank websites and blogs and things for how authoritative they are, how many other people are linking to them. And this is an amazing way to get your time back, 
be super efficient and give yourself that edge that you need, especially if you're creating something new or you've pivoted out of an old career into a new one. And this is how you can quickly create the authority and the credibility that you need so that when somebody Googles your name with whatever that topic is, they're going to start to see it coming up on the first page of Google. What are the questions that you have? This is something that I've done with my clients and I just feel so strongly as a guest, you can start to grow your list and grow your audience. And then down the line, if you do want to start your own podcast, because now you've got authority, you've got a solid email list, you've got a solid social media following, people are happy to have you on their podcast and promote you. You can go back on podcasts again and say, yeah, go check out my podcast. I had such a great time being a podcast guest that I decided to start my own podcast. So that's my advice to you. Just get the ball rolling. The How to Pitch a Podcast freebie, which I welcome you to go check out. You can go get that at audaciousmamas.com slash how to pitch pods and it's the number two how to pitch pods on audaciousmamas.com all right have a great day and i will see you